Hello everyone, welcome to Dr. Romish's Bird Sanctuary. I've uh, been uh, fixing it up after it was uh, vandalized again. And my camera was stolen, so I uh, had to buy a new one. A video camera. That's a Karawong. Now when I came to this house, uh, eight years ago, there were hardly any birds at all. There were motors, endless motors, and saws. You can still hear the saw from the mill over there. But the birds were being hunted, they were netting them and sending them overseas and selling them. They were packing them into uh, plywood containers. Instead of, uh, that's why they were baiting them from the gardens, luring them to the ground so they could catch them. But uh, my birds are all free. Well, they're beautifully camouflaged in this tree. This is actually a Madagascan tree, Poinciana. It's a Madagascan. But these birds are beautifully camouflaged in them. Because they're parrots, and they're parrots in Africa as well, of course. These are absolutely beautiful birds. Very intelligent. Very social, as you can see. Very playful. It's called the water cycle. And that's CGA for cosmopolitan green architecture. It's also called the five trees. And it shows the water cycle, the rain falling down, 
going through the forest, collecting down and dripping down into the sea. And there's the underwater bird. And there's the Aboriginal communities. And these are my favorites. They're beautiful little birds. And they're called noisy miners and are shot. Shot on sight. Because they have loud warning calls. They're my, uh, they're my watchbirds. Yeah, like that. That's a blue-faced honey eater. Isn't that a magnificent bird? Let's see if I can get a better focus on that. This is quite a heavy camera, so I'm having a bit of difficulty holding it steady. I need two hands for it. That's on the baby, baby uh, rainbow lorikeet. That sort of nasal sound. They're about the same size as the adult. Sometimes a bit bigger when they have puffed up feathers. So I couldn't see that time which one was the baby. And uh, yes, I'm uh, breeding tadpoles. Uh, I should show you this. This is the the bread that the crow takes and puts in the water. 
That's why I need to have running water. And it takes the bread and puts it in that water as well, and then tips the water out. And over here, yesterday, I had frog spawn. And these are uh, ponds for breeding frogs. And I already have lots of frogs. The night air is filled with the sound of frogs of several different species. I have only seen one green tree frog that came into my garden, came into my kitchen. And I've seen some striped burrowing frogs. But the frogs are very difficult to see because they hide and they burrow under the ground. So you can't get these beautiful photos of frogs that they, uh, that they have uh, on the uh, TV because those are captive frogs filmed through glass. These are nocturnal frogs are very difficult to uh, hard to find hard to find you can hear them you can hear them at night and uh, this is my cosmopolitan green architecture uh, they chop down my grevillea my two grevilleas only a month ago but as you can see this one's a very healthy plant so it's coming back uh, they butchered my banyan tree which is very unpleasant uh, and they chopped this grevillea but it's alive as well so I'm irrigating and uh, in fact I could turn that tap up a bit no I'll turn the other tap up a bit oh no maybe I'll do this one no I'll do, I'll do the other tap I'll show you my system um, I've got the reason there are so many frogs is that I have many ponds little ponds this is the deepest one it's mainly empty I'll turn the tap up that's the tap and that runs from a hose that runs underneath the house and as you can see I've got plants growing even underneath the house and I've got a little pond over here I got this bamboo they chopped down now that bamboo is creating a beautiful fence and I'm using the bamboo bamboo is a very useful plant and this is what they did to my garden chopped it down and threw it in the backyard that's not very nice is it that was my garden they, uh, last year they chopped down this beautiful uh, gum tree it's about three four meters four meters tall and uh, they savaged all my uh, Sri Lankan spinach but what I'm growing is gotukola gotukola is a Sri Lankan plant that is absolutely beautiful it's very very good for diabetes and for other health problems and uh, Godukola is uh, growing wild it has been introduced like many other Sri Lankan plants to Brisbane and Sri Lankan geckos as well so it's been colonizing across the Indian Ocean brought by ships and I had a miner two miners in my garden in the last week uh, these are Indian miners, the Sri Lankan miners. So, uh, Australia is being colonized by uh, Asian fauna and flora. And that's actually a very good thing. Because it'll get rid of the uh, South American cane toads that the CSIRO brought in that decimated our native fauna and flora. It's much better to have these very beautiful and valuable Asian plants and animals that's right now oh, my TV has gone off so uh, 
yeah this is my office and uh, this is uh, hub the holistic university of brisbane this is where i do my work and uh, i'll just leave you with this professor barry marshall wants 3.5 million to trial a new allergy drug he owns the company thinks that he could have helped with the storm asthma in melbourne uh, they claimed four lives a few days ago. Well, I'll tell you what I think about the storm, storm asthma that's uh, affecting England as well, apparently. Uh, storm asthma, I would suspect, is due to fear of storms. Right, a fear can cause asthma and difficulty breathing. And in fact, these guys don't even know the difference between people having acute respiratory problems and actually having asthma. And they're giving Ventolin to everyone. Now, Ventolin is an adrenal uh, receptor stimulant which makes your heart beat faster so that can make you even more anxious um, and uh, it sometimes works for asthma if it's proper asthma but uh, you can I'd say that the theory <laughs> that they're exploding pollen because of the humidity of the storm explodes. What a load of rubbish. Pollen doesn't explode with humidity. It expands. <laughs> These guys are utter fools. They're utter fools. Rye grass allergy. Rye grass allergy. That's what a lot of people have. That's rubbish. Some people get hay fever. Yeah. And dust mite is the commonest cause of hay fever, not rye grass allergy. Uh, this is the oh, the Alfred Hospital or one of the St. Vincent's Hospital. These these guys are fools. And he's he won a Nobel Prize, this chap, <laughs> for uh, discovering that Helicobacter was the cause of ulcers. Helicobacter, or Campylobacter as it used to be called, Campylobacter pylori, is associated with particular stomach ulcers. And apparently has been found in lots of recalcitrant ulcers that came back after treatment. But the biggest cause of ulcers is, as everyone knows, or should know, stress, not helicobacter. It's stress that causes ulcers. Right. And stress and anxiety also cause asthma. Right. So, storm asthma, nothing to do with exploding pollen granules. <laughs> Uh, that's Dr. Romesh over and out. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>